Right, and thanks for the, for, for the um, chance last night for the projection. That was actually the first time that has been done, um, like a finger painting projected to a wall, so um, it was super exciting for me. Um, right, so I'm going to talk about just one branch of mobile art, and I'm um, glad that Ivo just came up with this great talk before, and I can pick up on his first slide, actually, um, since I'm going to talk about painting, using mobile devices to paint uh, in a in a more or less classical way. So um, just as a hint, I tried to use as many different apps. I'm going to talk a lot about apps because I think apps really matter. Um, I tried to use as many different apps in, uh, on the slides, and I just put some notes down there so in case you are interested. Just you can notice down, down there. So my name is Benjamin Rabe. So this is my Twitter handle. This is where you can find all my stuff. Um, if you care about it, check in. I got a, quite a scaring mail from Harold uh, the, the other week, which said, um, you've got to prepare for the talk of your life. And that's, that's quite a, that's a bold thing right in your face, right? And um, So it just took me a while to, to realize that it's actually not that scary for me, because as an artist, I'm just like a three-year-old. I actually started to using uh, the iPhone to paint and started to paint three years ago. And I've been painting a lot as a child and as a kid, and I wanted to become a comic artist and whatever. And that kind of stopped right away the moment I uh, started to work as a designer, actually. Um, so my, like my, my curve of paintings went down to zero. And three years ago, I just discovered that little art studio in the right in my pocket. And so it went back up to like one or two pieces a day. So I just want to quickly run, run you through uh, the last three years and what happened there um, in the mobile art world. So uh, as Ivo mentioned, end of 2008, 2009, brushes came out. And that was uh, like the first serious app on the iPhone uh, that allowed for painting. It wasn't really a hit right away. Uh, the first comment on the app store was like, nobody would ever create anything on a device of the size of the iPhone. That's just not uh, going to happen. Um, so it took like three or four months that Steph Cardo, an art director at Disney, uh, picked, picked up brushes and he started to do some very fast paintings of, um, of like, uh, like Bay Area sunsets and stuff. We're going to see something of that later. And that created quite a buzz on the, on the blogosphere. Um, that's when I got... Uh, got into it, and that's also when that group Harold just mentioned actually formed online on Flickr, started to exchanging uh, work, uh, started to collaborate, uh, etc. So uh, that was like the first kickoff. Then um, the mentioned New Yorker cover, which was a big thing, which was the first like A4 cover printed, um, the first piece that was created on an iPhone. Um, after that, it was on ABC, and, and as, as always in, in the US, things kind of kickstart way easier than in Europe. Um, so that group, that mentioned group, started to, to, uh, to, to, to make shows and make galleries and approach galleries, and that was the first time our galleries started in 2009. And then in 2010, um, we decided that we have to kind of get out of this online world and kind of meet. So. Um, we decided to run our first mobile art conference. And luckily, we had the ITP in, in, in New York on our side. So that's when we, um, like end of, I think, October 2010, we did our first conference in New York uh, with about 250 attendees from over 13 countries. It was all about uh, mobile art. I'll just go a little faster now. Um, so that's about the history of it. and it, it kind of ended in the first appearance of marble art and finger paintings in the Fine Art Museum, which was last year, which was the Hamburg MKNG, which was the second largest museum of um, um, arts and craft in Europe. So within three years, we came from, from like zero to, um, to artists being shown in a museum, which is something that kind of thrills me still. So obviously, mobility is um, like one core thing. And like I say, as I said before, the fact that I found this thing in my pocket, which was sold to me as a phone, but I never really use it as a phone. I don't like phoning that much, but it actually turned into an art studio for me. And I was able to use it in all these times 
to the day where you actually can't do much. Like you sit on the bus, you sit on the train, you sit on a boring meeting or whatever. And all of a sudden, I, could, I was able to use this time to be creative. To not just sit and consume, not just listen to music or MP3s and, or read or stuff. I could actually uh, sit on the tube and have all these great inspiration flying by and um, start painting. So um, I want to show you just some examples of how mobility and not only enables the people to be creative again, but also how it um, can inspire people to um, to kind of catch certain certain things they come by. I mentioned the uh, Steph Cadour, and th those are just some examples of his very 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 fast sketches um, of light and color um, in in the Bay Area. This is Matthew Seidel Connors. He's from uh, from New York, and he travels from Hoboken to to like Manhattan every morning, and he. Um, paints people in the on the metro, people he sees, and he, use, he likes to use very different uh, kinds of apps. He meshes apps a lot, so you see on the right page, piece, uh, he uses an app called Type Draw, where you can actually draw with type and stuff. So um, he actually does the creation of art. He, it, he makes it like a like a public thing, like kind of almost like a street art thing, so people can actually watch. And he told me a story that once uh, a person he painted. Kind of, he didn't. The guy didn't know what, what he was up to. He just saw him like doing things and looking at him, and he came up to him and kind of um, smashed the, the the iPhone from his hand, and was was quite angry. Um, There's just some other examples of that. So he does this very quickly, like like a like a 30 minute ride, and um, there's just some other examples. This is Patricio from uh, Paris who does this in his, uh, in his uh, like lunch breaks and he goes out to the parks and does all these different kind of, kind of things there. This is something I have done uh, last year because we have all these funny contraptions uh, when we're in an urban space and all these, um, all these machines and stuff. So um, I usually, when I come by it, I, I snap it and then I just make up a story with that. So... Um, Mobility, of obviously, is, is a key factor, but very early on, also collaboration was very important. Uh, even three years ago, when we met on Flickr, it very fastly happened that people would just grab pieces from, from other people and start working on it, and stories would evolve, and, and, and collaborations, and whatever. So um, that's why I put the idea of collaboration at the center of the museum show. So that museum show was actually about the work of Jonathan Ive at, uh, at Apple, and we just had one wall with 10 iPads. And I didn't care really about the curating stuff. I didn't want to do that. So I just uh, invited 10 people uh, to be part of it, and I just gave them one rule, that is, you have to grab another artist, and you have to collaborate in some way, in whatever way you want. So this is just one example by um, Lou Million. She is from the UK, and she does all this kind of crazy... Um, uh, kind of faded, grungy f uh, iconography stuff. And Matthew Watkins, who lives in Bari, uh, Italy, who's more of an illustrator guy, but he does all these machinery kind of style. And this is just one example of what they came up together, which is one of my favorite pieces of the whole show. So this is just to show you that collaboration is very, very important. Um, this year, we went a step further in terms of collaboration, because what I showed you before it was really like asynchronous collaboration. People would paint something and then mail to the other and then he would do something and mail it back. So this year uh, an app called SketchShare came out, uh, which allows you to collaboratively paint and work on one canvas with up to four people at the same time in real time, um, which is a brilliant experience in terms of uh, communication, in terms of creation. So it uses... Um, the game center to connect and stuff. And this is just one example, one very quick example I did with uh, Matthew Hall from the UK, and he used the blue color, I used the red color, and we painted that like one night uh, within an hour. Um, this is a piece by Fabric 
Lenny and Jonathan Growl. They use Sketcher too. They live like 6,000 6, miles apart. Jonathan lives in the, UK, uh, in the US and Fabric in the UK. So um, there was a show, art show coming up, it was called the 154 Collective Show. And they had two months to create 154 pieces um, collaboratively. And this is the whole range of, of artwork. They all created using SketchShare, working on one canvas at the same time in real time. Uh, I think I also have a photo. This is um, when we visited the show and uh, we did a workshop with the kids. And in the background, you see all the, all the art. So uh, that leads me to kind of the, the roundup slide, because um, as Ivo mentioned before, in those first three years, we actually really used these things just as tools. We kind of like our three-year-old three toddlers who can just play and don't have to carry all these, these heavy weight of art history and stuff. We can just play and do stuff, which is kind of cool. It makes things easier. Um, but with the example of Sketcher, you can see that we actually have a different material to work with. It's not stuff. It's not atoms. It's, it's data that's actually our material to work with. And the sketcher example is just one, one thing to where I think which is the direction where we can go to, to, to actually discover new ways of creating painterly works using mobile devices, devices we carry along all the time with a material that's purely data, which kind of records all our behavior, which can be changeable, which can be hackable. Um, I just imagine like a GitHub for, for painters where you can actually fork work from other people and work from that, et cetera, et cetera. So um, with that, I, oh no, that was backwards. Kind of want to wrap it up. Just want to mention that we have tonight another possibility to do projection on the, um, on the castle. And I just want to invite you, if, you, if anybody's up to, to join me, I will be sitting some, somewhere downstairs with my iPads and just um, paint over the, the templates. So everybody who wants to paint the castle tonight or see his painting up on the castle can just join me um, and I'll show you some, some apps and some stuff we do. Thank you.